I have it on good authority that a certain Kraken group will be making a comeback in 2021. Hmm... I wonder who... And not only that, they will be releasing a fully working version of a very rare Belgian made game. So make sure to subscribe and to smash the like button and get ready for the rediscovery of the game Sun Chussy. Our story begins in 1984, when Alexander and Xavier Kral, two brothers born and raised in Belgium, got their first home computer, the Commodore 64. It was a gift from their dad, as he got sick of the constant begging for coins, which the boys would spend at the arcades. And he was right. From now on, all time was spent in front of the screen at home, playing classic games such as Centipede, Gyrus, Beachhead, Choplifter, Pitfall, you name it. After two years of constantly playing games, Alex, the oldest brother, got bored and started dabbling in the programming language basic. When the Atari ST was released a few years later, the Commodore 64 was sold and replaced by a new 16-bit machine. And it was on the Atari that Alex released his first major title, working non-stop every day after school for 12 months in a row. Xavier did some of the level design as well. The game was completely coded in assembler and called Kryptonag and was published by Hipstock in 1989. With the little money they earned from Kryptonag, Alex bought an Amiga. Their next title would not only be their biggest game, but also the last one created on the Motorola based home computers. This game would be a platformer, but as in Kryptonag, it would also feature some different genres mixed in. Mostly designed by their friend Philip Burton, who was a graphics artist, with inspiration drawn from the classic Warner Boy. The game was called Sun Chussy and was programmed on the Amiga by Alex and on the ST by Xavier. It was released in 1991 by a very young company called Expose Software. Sadly, this choice of publisher was considered a bad one by both brothers and it left a bad taste in their mouth. As soon after, Expose Software filed for bankruptcy and Alex and Xavier never saw a dime for all of their efforts. After spending so much hard work, they felt ripped off. To this day, we don't know exactly how many copies of the game were sold and if there even was a decent physical release. The game was lost in time, until the 2000s, when it surfaced in the Amiga scene. But on the ST, not so much. Well, that is, until now. As with many bedroom coders, it all began on the ZX81. Sebastien wasn't interested in games. Programming and basic was what it was all about. Until the very day he witnessed the horror game 3D Monster Maze. That's when he knew he had to learn assembler. In 1987, Sebastien was invited to a copy party. This is where he first witnessed the Atari ST. A few months later, he got one as a gift for his 14th birthday together with a few floppy disks. The disks contained crack games, but they were of no interest to Sebastien. He was fascinated by the intros, especially the ones by Cracking Team the Replicants. He watched them over and over again. In autumn of 89, Sebastien was offered a part in the new Cracking Group Fusion. Of course he gladly accepted, and that is when the nickname Orion was born. During the first years at Fusion, he learned how to hack and pack games and eventually also coding an assembler. When two years later, one of the founding members left Fusion to join the Replicants, the future of Fusion wasn't looking very bright. It was up to Orion to keep the boat afloat, coding intros and getting new games. By 1992, the Atari was declining in popularity. Lots of old members of the Replicants had abandoned the scene and the once legendary cracking team was on the brink of extinction. It was at that moment that members of Fusion were called to help out. And in this strange turn of events, 
Orion was able to join the team which had always seemed inaccessible to him. It was a dream come true. It didn't last long however, as the replicants ceased to exist by 1993. Fast forward 25 years. Using social media, Sebastien is able to find all former members of the replicants again. At one point, he gets in touch with MIT from the group Next, who also cried games for the replicants using the pseudo Black Angel. And this is where the story comes full circle. You see, MIT, also known as Olivier Lermite, was one of the founders of Exposed Software. A few days later, a developer's version of the game Son Chouci was found and donated to Sebastien. Prior to this, we only had a bad crack on the commercial version by Terminator Kit. Now owning two versions, Sebastien started combining both to create one fully working, fully cracked definitive version. But he did so much more, like adding hard drive support, speeding up load times, adding a mega trainer and make the game compatible with faster systems like the Falcon and the CT60. And so, a little bit of Atari ST history got preserved. Sebastien eventually contacted the Crowd Goddess and they love what he has done. And this concludes the story. So what do I think of the actual game? Well, Sun Chu Si is not your ordinary platform game. For starters, the graphics by Gürten are beautiful and they are bursting with colors and details. While I do see the Wonder Boy connection, I personally think the game has got an elf vibe to it. And for some strange reason, the boss fights remind me of Sega's Altered Beast. The sampled music in the intro and the outro is also very nice, but I'm missing a YM track while playing the game. During gameplay, all we get are sound effects, albeit very nice ones. The game features 6 action packed levels filled with platforms, pits, death traps and hordes of different enemies. Throughout the levels you will find all kinds of goodies like power-ups to replenish your energy, coins which can be used in the shop, but the most fun is had with the extra firepower bubbles. It almost seems there's an unlimited number of different weapon types, sometimes reminding of a run and gun game, like for example Turrican. Also noteworthy are the T tokens, so yes, this game has a time limit built in, but instead of being instantly killed when you run out of it, the game switches to night cycle and everything gets increasingly harder to see until the screen turns black. Now all this might sound very common, but as in true Carl Brothers tradition, different game styles are mixed into this amazing platformer. For example, when you reach the end of a level, the game is turned into a side-scrolling shooter. The main hero is now flying a magic carpet and it's up to you to survive it to the end of the level, shooting wave after wave of baddies until you reach the boss. If you manage to kill him, you'll enter the next world. And finally, there are also bonus rounds, and these little games are a big wing to Kryptonite. As this time around, you play a little fierce game of Arkanoid to collect as much points as possible. What an amazing accomplishment this game is. Created with such a small team, the game is simply stunning. The product oozes creative passion. And while the gameplay is very well balanced, it's a tough cookie to crack. Really hard from time to time. With its moments of sheer frustration. And as of level 3, timing becomes key. But once you overcome this fact, Sun Shu Si actually turns into one of the better platformers for the Atari ST. A beautiful, console quality game. It's just too bad it took so long to reach the public. If you're still watching, you are amazing. Thank you so much, but we've reached the end of the show. So take care and stay Atari. Ah, oh no, <laughs> no, what, bye.